In this video, we are going to talk about five reasons why you get really annoyed at your partner as a fearful avoidant. I'm Pauline and I'm so happy you're here because being annoyed is just not fun. It doesn't do anything for your relationship. It just doesn't feel good. A lot of guilt is usually involved and I don't want that for you. So let's dive into the five reasons why you use this when you have a fearful avoidant attachment style as a protection mechanism, because that's what it is a lot of the time. So I remember when I used this and was completely unaware of it 10 years ago when I was having serious doubts about my relationship to my now husband. Um, and I could just get annoyed at everything. I could get annoyed at the big things. Like I, I felt like he wasn't trustworthy or he wasn't romantic enough. And I was annoyed when he didn't bring me home flowers to the way he was speaking, talking, looking at me, saying something, not saying something. It could be really big or small. And I was convinced that it was him, that if he would change, if he would change just a little bit, I would feel better. I would be happy. And I think I also believed that I would not have this with anybody else. So there was a part of me that was just really scared that this, this meant that the relationship wasn't right, that I had to leave him because he annoyed me and you shouldn't be annoyed when you're with the love of your life, right? Wrong. <laughs> you can absolutely have a fantastic loving relationship and be annoyed from time to time. It's so human, it's so normal. And there are reasons why you are annoyed that have absolutely nothing to do with the thing you're annoyed about. So the first reason, which is maybe the most important one, is that there is probably a need that you haven't identified in yourself and definitely haven't acted upon. So it could be that you just need to be alone for a little bit and you feel like you can't say that or that you're not supposed to want that because when you're in a loving relationship, shouldn't you want to be with that person all the time? So when you have that belief, it's very hard to even feel that need and to say, I just want some alone time because you feel like being wrong or the relationship is wrong when you do that. But then you get annoyed at your partner because you actually have this need to be alone. So what your fear brain does, the part of you that wants to protect you, is put distance between you two. So it, it kind of acts like a buffer. The annoyance acts like a buffer and um, you create distance. That's what it does. So identifying your needs, the needs that are underlying the being annoyed really helps, really, really, really helps at being less and less annoyed in the future. So the first one is needs, not identifying them, not meeting your own needs. The second one is the fear of rejection. And it could be that your partner is doing something um, that annoys you because you're actually you've actually learned that when you do something that way, that you will get um, rejected. And mostly you learn this during childhood, obviously. And um, it's a projection of your own insecurities, your own fear of being rejected. So you have learned a certain way to behave in which you think you will be ex accepted by the world. Then if your partner acts in a different way of which you are certain that he or she will not be accepted, it kind of ignites a fear in you for them, but also for you because you chose this partner and you're afraid that if they won't get accepted, people will judge you too and will reject you too. So you kind of want your partner to be as perfect as you're trying to be. While all the while, it's really a mirror of, um, how much you think you will be accepted by the world just being the way you are or being the way you want to be. So in that way, the being annoyed is actually a beautiful lesson and a beautiful mirror in, okay, he's acting in a way that I would never, 
but maybe you see that he will be accepted also or maybe he won't be accepted by some people like your family <laughs> uh, but accepted by other people so it's not a, a hard truth so that is one part of the fear of rejection uh, but it could also be that you're actually scared that your partner will reject you it could be underlying the being annoyed because what you're doing when you're really annoyed at your partner is actually making them less so making them less attractive less likable and that is a perfect strategy when you're actually quite scared to be rejected because when you like them less the pain of rejection will be less according to your fear brain it doesn't actually work like that but that's what your fear brain is trying to tell you that when you like them less it won't hurt as bad so it's actually in that way a protection mechanism for the pain of rejection the third one is boundaries boundaries is such an important one i mean as a fearful avoidant it's really important to have boundaries to place boundaries and that will make such a huge difference in your life um and one of the things that will change is that you will be annoyed so much less often uh, <laughs> i don't know if that's the right way to say it but you will notice that when you do something you actually don't want to do or you accept something you don't want to accept you will get annoyed at your partner especially if he's involved much faster than when you have just clear boundaries and you're not afraid to set them so a, a couple of months ago i um i wanted to do something i had to finish something and my husband forgot that he had an appointment um, and we have a baby together. She's one year, one year old now, one year old. And um, so he was like, oh, can you, can you have her for a minute? He was supposed to have her. Can you have her for a minute? Uh, I, I have this thing, I'm sorry. And I said, yeah, sure. Didn't want to be difficult. Um, I thought there's no other way because he has this appointment that he forgot. And also I should want to be with my baby all the time. So I can't say no to that. And when he came back, I was just annoyed at everything he did. He was cleaning the kitchen, which is awesome. And I was just annoyed at the way he did it. And then I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? <laughs> and I realized I should have put up a boundary. I should have just said no, or I should have said, okay, this is tricky because I have to finish this thing. So we have to find a way that I can finish this thing on time. Um, but it was also okay for me to just say, well, you know, this was what we agreed upon that you would have her and I'm sorry you forgot that appointment, but I really need to finish this now. So it's not my responsibility, which uh, when you're not used to setting boundaries can sound so selfish, so selfish and so cold, uh, but it's actually, it can actually be really healthy and also can uh, really help in not being annoyed as much. So since that time, and I've been working on that before this also, but since that time, I've, I've really stuck to my boundaries more and I have not been annoyed pretty much ever since, even though 10 years ago, I was pretty much annoyed at everything. So a lot can change, a lot can change. And boundaries is one, one thing of a big, big thing. The fourth reason is that it could be that you're, find yourself that you find yourself getting annoyed when you feel weak or vulnerable and that can be different for everybody uh, it could be that you feel weak and vulnerable when you're tired or when you're sick or when you're um, not happy or when you're sad and when you in your childhood have learned that those things are not acceptable and that you will actually get abandoned even if it's just emotional abandonment which is definitely also very very harsh um what you do is you actually start to push the people away that love you and might actually want to be there for you because you're completely convinced that 
they will abandon you when they see how weak and vulnerable you are. And it's not weak and vulnerable to be tired, to be sad, to be unhappy. But that's what you learned in childhood. Maybe you've noticed that your mom or dad just kind of retreated a little bit when you would be tired or you felt like you always had to perform or do your best or be your best. And um, when you couldn't because you were tired or sick or unhappy, um, that your parents were just not as happy with you. So then you associate that state to something negative, which can cause your fear brain to want to protect you by being annoyed at your partner, pushing them away so that they won't reject you, so that they won't see how weak or vulnerable you are. Which is so sad because in those moments, it's so good to have love and support, but you just won't allow yourself because a part of you is convinced that rejection will be part of it or um, that they won't like it or that they will uh, judge you for it. So not wanting to be weak or vulnerable can absolutely be a reason to be annoyed at your partner out of nowhere, seemingly nowhere. And then the last one is expectations. So when you have an expectation of, um, let's start small, of a night wanting it to be perfect because you're going out to dinner to this fancy restaurant and you just want this to be perfect. So there's like a script in your head that you want to have played out. And your partner is just not playing the part. <laughs> He's just not, he or she is just not playing this game. Um, so they are doing things that are not in your script. How dare they? <laughs> Even though you have not communicated this script at all, you just want it to be perfect. And you just kind of hope and assume that they feel that and they will uh, play that part. But then they do different things. And then you just get so annoyed because you're actually afraid there's a fear underlying that that you will miss out on something because of it that you will miss out on magic because of it but magic is never in a controlled situation so when you're trying to play out that script that's trying to control the situation and you will never find magic that way it's by being completely present and just being completely okay with whatever happens or doesn't happen so when you start to let go of your expectations more and more, you will notice that you will get annoyed less and less and you will be able to be in the present moment more and more. There's also a bigger expectation a lot of times with our partner and that's that you want them to help you, fix you or save you. And when you are feeling unhappy, powerless, and you realize that your partner is just a human being, they're not perfect, they cannot help you, fix you, or save you, it can be so disappointing that you just get annoyed at everything they do because they're not perfect. So that's really just a mirror to how powerless you feel to help and fix and save yourself. Um, and also, if you let go of this expectation more and more, you will find that it's easier for you to take the responsibility and, and help and save yourself, but also to allow the support. Instead of expecting them to fix you, you just allow them to support you through you helping, saving yourself. So these are five reasons that you can be really annoyed at your partner and, and kind of use that as a protection mechanism, as a fearful avoidant. I really hope this was valuable and you had some insights. Let me know in the comments if this was uh, in any way uh, valuable to you. I really would like to know. If you want to know more about the lesser known causes of fearful avoidant attachment style, you can look at this video right here. If you want to know what a fearful avoidant attachment style even is, you can look at this video right here. Thank you for being here and know that you are absolutely good enough exactly as you are right now.